All right, guys, for our fourth and final assembly for um, the SolidWorks uh, course here, we are looking at the gripper assembly. Um, this one really isn't overly difficult. Um, it's just being able to um, know how to do a couple extra steps that we haven't done before yet, um, such as rotate, rotating apart by delta XYZ specifically. Also, being able to change material within an assembly. Um, which we also have not done. Uh, again, this one you are going to um, solve for center of mass. Uh, this will be an MMGS. Um, you can see I got a couple of instructions on the actual sheet for this one, such as all parts um, inside the cavity, sorry, body cavity are left aligned to the inside edge. Um, what I'm trying to say right there is there's a cavity of the body. So the body is this big gray piece. There's a cavity in which all the rest of the parts fit inside that cavity to create the, the gripper piece of the mechanical arm. Um, all those parts are left aligned to this edge here. So when you place it in the, the uh, purple piece here, purple, pink, whatever color you see right there, is going to be touching that inside edge. Then the blue is going to be touching the inside edge of the, the purple. Um, the grippers are going to be just snapped right onto the edge of this, and you can see they're, they look pretty centered on here too. Um, the gap you see though is right here. Okay, and the reason you see that gap again is because this is uh, aligned in the middle of that piece right there. So you do want to left align uh, those pieces. Um, there will be a gap um, that is intentional. Um, if you try to center this right here, your center of mass will come out wrong. So please make sure you leave the gap right there. Normally, that's not a uh, practice that we would do um, in design. Um, this is for instructional purposes, though. That way you can clearly see, um, and then I can define that pretty easily uh, by seeing that you can apply that um, in the drawing format. So the other thing that you're going to see is the dimensions here. Um, you do have an angle of 50 and 25, meaning that it's a symmetrical angle. It's going to be wrapped around the center of this body right here um, for these grippers. So I'm going to show you how to do all that in this video coming up here. Um, please make sure you go ahead and uh, save your part files. Um, so go in here, download all the part files. Um, you will need one of each of everything except the pulp, uh, small pin. You're going to use two of those. Um, so let's go ahead and dive into this one. So let's go ahead and go assembly. <clears throat> And I'm going to go ahead and place in one, two, three, whoop, control. There we go. <coughs> Again, as always with any assembly, the very first thing I'm going to do, pin the menu, meaning don't let it close. I'm going to grab the body, which is going to be our base right here. Check mark. That's going to align the part origin uh, to the assembly origin. And then I'm simply going to place one of everything in here. Sorry, except like I said, the, actually, sorry, I said that wrong. There are two grippers, my apologies, two grippers, one large pin, and then two small pins for one for each of the grippers. So my apologies there, I did say one, or sorry, one of each of everything except this, but there are actually two grippers and two small pins. All right, so let's go ahead and start putting this one together. When you're looking at the drawing for this one, you're going to notice right away in the drawing here that it's oriented differently than what you're seeing when you insert the part. So this piece here is actually facing the opposite direction. And this piece here is not only facing the opposite direction, it's also upside down. Okay, so how can we rotate it around to be able to get in the correct position? So what you're going to do is you're going to select on the part itself. In your assembly menu, you have a move component. Underneath move component is something called rotate. Now you can free drag it and try to rotate it around. I do not suggest doing that if you can avoid it. Okay, sometimes you need to do it. Um, I have I've had a really hard time in the past on simple parts getting them to realign back in the orientation I want it to um, once I've done that. So I typically always use by delta XYZ. And what it allows me to do is just rotate around an axis. And remember, I have three axes. If I'm looking down here at my triad or right here at my triad, I can see I have an x-axis. So if I wanted to rotate it around the body, like 
Think about it like a circle rotating around the x-axis, rotating around the y-axis, or rotating around the z-axis. For this one, I want to rotate around the y-axis. And I'm going to rotate it just 90 degrees so you can see it happening. I'm really trying to go 180, but I just want you to be able to see this. So when I hit apply to that 90 degrees, it's going to rotate it 90 degrees. I can keep hitting apply, and it's going to keep rotating it 90 degrees. That one's in the correct spot now, so I'm going to hit check mark, and I'm going to do the same thing with this one here. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to rotate, delta X, Y, Z. I'm going to do the same thing with that one. I'm going to go ahead and do 180 on that one so you can see it. There we go. But this one I also need to flip the other way. So I've been rotating around the Y axis. Okay, this time I'm going to change that back to zero. If you leave it at 180, even though you're changing another one and hit apply, it's still going to do all of the dimensions every single time you hit apply. So you do have to zero these out. So now I want to rotate it around the X axis. And again, I'm going to do this at 90 just so you can see it. So at 90 degrees, it will rotate around that X axis. And I want to get it to the point where it's underneath there. Good. Okay, so that's done with our rotate tool. Now let's go ahead and start putting this one together. This one is pretty simple to put together. There's not a lot to it. I'm going to mate. So I know that most of the stuff lines up right here on this hole, so I'm going to go ahead and start putting that stuff in. I'm going to go ahead and start with this bottom piece. There we go. And that one's going to, like I said um, in the start of this video, the left side of this is going to align to the inside of that wall. This one's going to look pretty symmetrical right here. That's good. So this now should rotate just like that. This blue piece is going to go in there as well. It's going to go same hole. There we go. And again, I'm going to do the left side, to the inside left edge of this one. And on this, I should have, I did this right, I should have a little gap on that side, which I won't have on this left side. Zoom out. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and put the uh, pins in. So I'm going to put this large pin in. And then I'm going to do a face to face just to make that flush. There we go. So that pin is in. Now let's go ahead and put our grippers on. I'm going to move this one out of the way here. I'm going to start with this bottom gripper. So I'm going to go this circle here is going to align up with that circle there. And then this face right here is going to touch this face right here. The uh, issue I have right now is this is upside down. So I'm just going to try to grab it and move it. Let it move around there. There we go. Get it about right. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mate this face here and this face here. When I do that, it should parallel mate. There we go. Parallel. Perfect. It's exactly what we wanted to have happen. So now when I move this, that grip moves with it. And we just need to repeat that process on the top. The same exact steps. A little circle. This face here touches this face here. This one's already lining up pretty good, so now I just need to do this face here to that face there. There we go. <clears throat> and now I'm just going to put these pins in. There we go. There's that one. And same thing with that one. Kind of hiding on me a little bit there, so I'm just going to rotate it so I can see them, and I'm going to flush mount these. So face to face. Same thing here. Face there. Face to there. Good. All right, almost done here with this one. Okay, so we got to do a couple things. Uh, if you remember seeing this, I said got we have all the parts aligned. That's good. Set the angle of both arms as shown. So we need to set this angle in here. Okay, well, that's easier said than done. How do I set an angle if I don't know what I'm attaching it to? So I could do 50 degrees from each other. Okay, so if I did a 50 degree mate from here to here, Right now that's at zero. Remember because it's touching, it's flat, it's parallel. Zero. I could set this at 50, which that's saying it's... Anytime I see this and I see this is over 90, that means I know that they're taking the angle from 180 and not from zero. Okay, so anytime it's zero, zero or a low number like that, I know they're going from zero to 90. If I see a bigger number like this, and I can look at that and I can say that's that looks like it's about 45 degrees away from each other. 
just looking at it from the side. I know it's it's not 90 degrees because 90 degrees I'd have a line all the way up here, right? So I know it's smaller than that. So that means they got to be taking this from 180. So it's 180 minus to get that number of 131. So if I did that, I'd do 180 minus 50. Okay. Now they are technically 50 degrees apart. But I still need this to be 25 degrees from the center. So how do I do that? Well, I need to go turn on a tool. I need to go view, hide show, temporary axis. Now I get the center of this body here. So what I'm going to do now is go from here to this line. If I can get a hold of it. Come on. There we go. Angle. Now you can see it moving the whole thing. Now I can go 25 there. Boom. Okay, now the one thing I would say is on that right there, you could do that one of two ways. You could do like I just did, and you could put on the 50 first, and then put on the 25, or you could go ahead and put on that temporary axis, and then do each of them separately at 25. That's up to you. That, I, however you get there is perfectly fine, as long as you have the right dimension to each their own on that one. Okay, so got that step done. Now it says change material of both arms to plain carbon steel. Okay, well, material, I don't see material up here. That's an issue. Okay, reason is I got to go to the part itself. So I can go to this arm, and when I expand that arm, now I get the material of the arm. The assembly is not going to have a material, which each of these parts will. So on that arm, I need to right click and go to plain carbon steel. You should see it change colors because it is changing in material. Okay, if I go back one second here, I'm going to, I think it's 1060 alloy. Uh, let me just hit undo. There we go. Right now, if I evaluate this thing, mass properties, my mass is going to be 691. Okay, you can see the XYZ there. But if I do this and I change my material, to plain carbon steel, what should happen to the mass? Well, the 1060 alloy is in aluminum. Plain carbon steel is much heavier than aluminum. So it should go up when I do that. So I'm going to change that one. Go to arm one. Go ahead and change that one. And do I have any other steps? Solve for center of mass. So now all you need to do is go back to your mass properties. Find your XYZ, go ahead and punch that in in the assignment, and you are done with this part. Again, as always with any assemblies, please make sure you not only submit your assembly file, but the part files with it. Even though I already have a copy of the part files, it's attached to the parts that you used. If you don't submit those, each, each time I open up your assembly, I have to go find all those files, reattach it for it to even work. Otherwise, it shows up as nothing. Alright, if you have any questions, like as always, reach out to me. Good luck on this one.